I'm going to discuss some of the PeopleSoft security enhancements that I've implemented with the use of servlet filters. Servlet filters reside on the web server. They sit in between the client and the servlet that is being called on. In PeopleSoft, there are some different servlets, but some of the ones you might be familiar with are the PSP or the PSC servlets. So when a client sends a request to these servlets, the servlet filter is capable of viewing and or modifying these requests. Similarly, when the servlet generates a response for the client, the servlet filter is capable of viewing and or modifying these responses. The first functionality that I've gained with the use of servlet filters is enhanced logging capabilities. So these requests that the user sends to the servlets, I am able to pick these requests up and store them in a database or a file. These requests contain a lot of useful information about the user's machine, location, um, as well as the resources that they're requesting. So as you see, these requests, they still go to the servlet and the servlet still generates a response. What is happening is in the middle, the servlet is just storing the request information. So this is extremely useful for if you're looking to maybe capture a sequence of events that are taking place in your system. Another way that I'm using servlet filters is for blocking requests. So maybe a client is making a request to a resource that I don't want them to access based on some certain circumstances. So I can block their request by redirecting their browser or just sending them a, a HTTP 404 saying that the re resource doesn't exist. Um, you know, a decent example of this would maybe be the WebLogic admin console. So maybe I only want my WebLogic administrators to, log to go to that login page. So I can look at their IP information when they're coming in, and, I, and I'll know the IPs that they should be coming in from. So if we get a request from a different IP to that resource, we can block them or, like I said, redirect them to a different resource. And this is a great um, use of servlet filters because, as you see, these filters are on the front, basically at the front door of your application. So if you're getting malicious requests, it makes sense to try to shut them down right up front rather than letting these requests get further along into your system. Another way that you can leverage the redirection capabilities of servlet filters is to enforce a second layer of authentication. So what I'm currently doing is when a client makes a request for a resource that contains sensitive information, the filter checks if this user has done two-factor authentication during this session. If the user hasn't, then I will redirect them to go do two-factor authentication before I give them access to these sensitive resources. The last way that I'm using servlet filters is to mask sensitive data that leaves the system. What happens, a client will make a request for a resource that contains sensitive information. The servlet will generate usually an HTML document to display this information in the user's browser. At this point, the servlet filter will look at the HTML document and replace any sensitive values in this document with a mask value before it sends it off to the client's browser. This is extremely useful because you're not really changing the data in the database or you're not modding up the application to achieve this. You're simply just changing the way the data looks right before it's displayed in the user's browser. So one more thing that I wanted to touch on with the use of servlet filters is the way that they can behave dynamically based on a rules engine. So what you can do is you can create a, in your application, you can create a page that your users can define rules on so that your servlet filter can behave off of these rules. So what are rules? Well, the rules will control how your, your, your servlet acts or when should it do certain actions. So as we saw, servlet filters are capable of doing a lot of different things, logging, redirecting, masking. Uh, there's a few different actions that they can do. So your users can define when should your servlet do these actions. So with masking, Maybe your users only want to mask data for certain users or users with certain people soft roles. Your servlet can look at that information and mask accordingly. Or maybe your users want to partially mask the data for certain users and do a full mask for other users. That would be a rule that, you, that they can define and it could be communicated with your servlet filter at runtime so that it'll behave accordingly. I would now like to demonstrate the functionality that I've gained with the use of these servlet filters. So the first thing that I'd like to show you is the login capabilities that I get with these servlet filters. So I'm currently, I have the log level set pretty high, so I'm, I'm logging pretty much everything that's going on right now, all the transactions that are occurring. 
So I'm just going to go to the electronic addresses page, search for an arbitrary input here, and I'm just going to update their email address. And then we'll go home. So all of this information was being logged. And I'm currently writing this to a log file for the demonstration purposes, but you can just as easily log this information to a database. So as you see, we are logging up some different information here. We've got the user ID, the IP address, their session ID, the timestamp, the resource that they're requesting, and then the request body. So you can log more information or less information than this, but I feel like this is very useful because this will give us a good understanding of what occurred in our system at any given point. So as you see, this user requested the PT landing page. This was the, the landing page after we logged in. And you, there's no request body here because this was a get. So if we did a post, there would be um, some information here that we could look at. Once again, the next request was a, it's another post, and this was to the email address page. So this was us clicking on the email addresses link. After that, we actually did a post and this was to the email address page. This was specifically, this was the search record. So if we search for that info ID here, it should show up in the body. And here it is, the people search input. So this information was being logged as we were, as we were doing these transactions. Similarly, after this, we do another post to the same component, and this should have been us changing the user's email address. And we can search for that and it shows up right here. So, and then after that, we just click the home button, the landing page again. So, as I said, you can log more or less information than this, um, but this could be super useful when you might need to do some security investigations. Um, you know, having this information will definitely help you out. Um, also, this information can be used to proactively defend your system. So, if you're logging you know, IP address information that users are coming in from, the moment that, say, an admin user comes in from a IP address that they've never come in from before, you can use that information to make a proactive decision. You might want to send a notification to the security administrator saying that this admin hasn't logged in from this IP address in the last three years, so there might be some suspicious activity going on right now. Um, you can challenge the user for two-factor authentication if you see stuff like this going on. So with the logging, uh, you could really use it to, like I said, kind of make a proactive decisions uh, to better protect your system. The next functionality that I would like to demonstrate is how you're able to redirect users as well as enforce a second layer of authentication with the use of servlet filters. So for this example, I'll log in as an administrator. And I'm going to attempt to do a sensitive transaction. So a good example of a sensitive transaction would be changing my password. And this is sensitive because if an imposter is logged in as this administrator, then if they were able to change that user's password, then the legitimate owner of that account would be locked out of the account at that point. So we protect this resource with these redirection capabilities with the servlet filters. And specifically what we do is we redirect the user to do two-factor authentication. So the servlet filter first checks, has this user done two-factor authentication for this session? And if the user hasn't done two-factor authentication, then the, the servlet filter will redirect them to do two-factor authentication before the user has access to the sensitive resource. So this is a, a custom two-factor authentication solution that I've built. It consumes web services to send out push notifications or SMS messages to users' cell phones. And I currently have this in development mode, so it's gonna automatically populate this number, but this is the, the time-sensitive code that the user would get on their device, and they would come here and type it in, and when they do that, they are fully authentic authenticated into the system. So they can do the sensitive transactions that, that they need to do uh, without, being, without being hindered. So we'll go ahead and change our password here. As you see, we're, we're able to do the, the sensitive transaction since we verified that we are who we say we are. The last functionality that I would like to demonstrate is how I'm able to mask sensitive data that leaves the system with servlet filters. So 
So for this example, we'll log in as the administrator again. And this is a, a user that has the PeopleSoft administrator role. So they have access to everything in the system, all the sensitive information. So we're going to go to add update a person since this is a, a page that has the national ID of other users on it. So this is something that we would like to protect unauthorized access to. So we'll search for an arbitrary template here. And when this page loads, you'll see that the national ID field is masked. So the way this works as delivered is this is an editable field that will display the full social security number for this user. And the reason we've masked it is because the user, the administrative user that I'm logged in as right now, this user hasn't done two-factor authentication for this session. So the servlet filter checks, has this user done two-factor authentication for this session? And if the user hasn't, then it says, okay, well, we're gonna mask any sensitive data that's gonna be displayed on this browser, on this user's browser. So, and we give them the option to do the two-factor authentication to unlock the, the, to get the access to the real data. But I just wanna demonstrate first how this user, you know, if they're performing a transaction on this page that doesn't require them to see this value, they can do this. So as you see, I just updated this user's email address and it works fine. So the, the, trans, the specific transaction that's, that this user was performing, it didn't require the knowledge of the social security number. So this is a, a very great solution. So we'll come back to this page and we'll do an example of, say this user needs to perform a transaction that they need to see this value. So what they can do is they'll click this link. It'll take them to the two-factor authentication the user can do this process and will be taken back to the search page to then get access to the user's unmasked data. So now we, this user is, you know, we, all, we, we know that this user is who they say they are since they've done two-factor authentication, so that's why we display the full value. So maybe what we needed, to, the transaction that we needed to do here was update the national ID of this user, so now we can perform that transaction.